Has anybody talked to you about depth of field yet? Or shooting wide open? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about this week. You know, if you've got some lenses like this one, this is a, a Carl Zeiss Planner, it's a 1.4. You know, there's 0 0.95, there's ones, there's 1 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.8, 2, you know, those are all, you know, relatively wide apertures. And that's what we like to shoot with. We have these lenses, we want to shoot with them wide open. So this week, I'm gonna to talk to you about that. Uh, some little pointers about how to still, even though it's wide open, how to um, get some sharp results. You know, there is a technique in to do so, and, uh, and that's what I want to talk about. So I'll be back in a second with more on that topic. Here I am, Vietnam. Green is always coming down. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. Okay, this week, um, I'm not going to be showing off any lenses. What are you talking about, Willis? Hmm, surprise, surprise. Now this week what I'm going to be uh, sharing with you is what I've discovered through, um, you know, just through my own experiences, uh, taking pictures and whatnot, and obviously my focus is on portrait, uh, portraiture, and, uh, and as you know through all my other videos, my favorite little model is my son Dylan. You know, this week again I just want to share with you a little bit about what I've discovered as far as shooting sharp that's sharp photos now when it comes to portraiture when it comes to sharp it, you know again it's kind of subjective as to what the uh, what the photographer or if the subject is a, a paying client yeah what they have in mind as far as uh, what expectations are, uh, you know, for the end results. And of course, like, you know, like I just said, I'm usually shooting mostly pictures of my son, so he's not, uh, he's not too demanding, you know, even though he's demanding outside, I don't know if you can hear him. To either feed him or play with him or who knows, you know, what, what he's thinking. But still, uh, so what I'm looking at this week are a number of different pointers. For you know, trying to get the you know the sharpest uh, photos as possible, and again, it's from my own perspective, of course. Um, you know, and as you know, I'm not a professional photographer, but as an enthusiast, you know, I still want the best uh, the best that I can I can uh, produce. So I'm going to go through a number of different pointers, and uh, again, mostly addressing what I have experience with, but uh, you know, I might mention other things too. Like, uh, as in regard to the very first point, um, you know, I, as you know from all my other videos, I shoot with uh, uh, Sony um, A7R2, and it's a full frame mirrorless camera. And I mostly use vintage lenses in, in that regard too, which are all manual focus. So um, that's gonna really be from the perspective that I'm, that I'm uh, describing this as. But I will mention, of course, obviously, the options that are out there. So with that said, um, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, sh shooting sharp photos with a uh, mirrorless versus a DSLR, which has a mirror, um, that, you know, you have different options with your, with your camera itself. So with the Sony here, I have an option to use what they call focus peaking. I haven't even begun to peak. When you turn that on, when you're relatively close to being in focus, the areas that are in focus will, will display a color. And you can change that color from white to red to yellow. Um, I tend to use red because most of the things I'm shooting pictures of don't have red in them, so they, they, that color stands out. Now obviously if you're shooting pictures of Santa Claus or something like that. What do you want? What are you doing? <laughs> God damn it! Nintendo Deer Hunter 3. Give a shit what you want? You know, you may want to change that to yellow, because uh, he's also red and white, right? So you may want to change your focus peaking to, to some color that stands out. Now that's just the first step, getting, uh, uh, getting in, you know, sharp focus is the uh, is focus peaking. 
But the next thing that I use to follow that up with once I'm once I've kind of nailed in where I want the focus to be, I uh, you know I've I've programmed my uh, C1 button to be to be a uh, magnifier. How big is it? What? Like how big is it? So I push that button a couple of times and it zooms in uh, right up on close onto the eyeball itself so I can try and get the eye as sharp as can be. And then once I'm satisfied with that, poof, I take the picture. And again, it's manual focus, so therefore it's a little slower uh, to get, you know, get the photo in focus that I'm looking for. And luckily with portraiture, your subjects you know, or not darting around like they are, you know, playing basketball or football or something, um, trying to trying to get a hold of these uh, these athletes. So of course, for for you know action shots and whatnot, I would obviously go with an autofocus. Oh my God, the automatic pilot it's deflating. In today's photography, anyway, that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, shooters are looking for is a is a a blurry background or an out of focus background, and then the quality of that background is a bokeh or bokeh depending on how you want to say it some say tomato some say tomato i say bokeh hmm, whether that's right or not i don't know but that's what i'm talking about that's the way i say it but anyway the um so if you have a dslr and um camera with the mirror you don't have uh focus peaking too bad so sad it works a slightly different way it's called uh live uh, live view. Is it live or is it Memorex? You see on your back screen exactly, you know, what's going through the through the lens. So it's almost like a mirrorless result in that regard. And same thing then you can use that to focus in to get as sharp as you can. You you use your magnifier in that in that way to focus in. So those uh you know and and again if it's and if it's portraiture you shoot wide open. You know you're looking at you know, now we have apertures that are 0.95 or 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, those kinds of uh, large um, aperture openings uh, produce that, that out of focus background that people are seeking. Now, if you are shooting action sports and whatnot, you know, you can still shoot lower numbered apertures, which are, you know, the wider, like 2.8, um, you know, 3.5, you know, four, and, you know, all the way up to maybe 5.6 or whatnot. Um, but that's what you need for action. You can't shoot, uh, you know, sports photography at uh, 1.2 or whatnot. You're going to have pretty blurry shots going on. So, you know, that's really the difference between portraiture and, and the action. Uh, the next point I want to bring up is, um, for auto, you know, for autofocus is turning on the features like such as the, as the Sony has here with the eye detection, face detection. Am I still in the thumbnail? You know, that's going to obviously also help with, uh, with getting sharp results. You know, letting the camera find the eye for you. Because, you know, with, with portraiture, that's probably the, the number one, uh, you know, holy grail of, uh, of a good portraiture picture is getting that eye in focus. The holy grail! Having the camera being able to do that for you or assist you in that is obviously going to help. So that's, uh, that's the next point, turning on your face detection or eye detection. Um, the next point for uh, getting sharpness is especially dealing with multiple subjects. So you have two, three, four, or a group of 20, you know, whatever, whatever it is for um, the photo that you're taking. If you still want that shallow depth of field and sharpness your um your subjects have to be on the same plane as in turn sideways from me to you a straight line so to speak except turn this way so if you have five people you need them all to be on that same that same uh, focal plane otherwise the camera is going to focus in on whoever's you know, closest and, and has in focus and whoever's a step back or step forward is going to be out of focus. Uh, so if you want everyone in focus, everybody has to be on that straight line. So that's, uh, that's the next, next point for you. Now that's with a shallow depth of field. So again, at, at you know, 1.2, 1.4, you need that to happen. Now, if you're going to be shooting at you know, F8, F11, kind of thing like that, then, you know, your subjects can be scattered. You know, the further the further you are away um, 
from them, the uh, you know the the depth of field doesn't doesn't matter so much in that regard, you know. But if you're up close, and that kind of that, so it's two points in one here kind of thing. So getting people lined up properly and how close you are or how far you are from your subjects is going to make a is going to have an impact on your on your sharpness. Now, if you're you're fairly close to your subject, like within within a meter or two, um, you know, again, you really need everybody on that same that focal plane to get them get them in focus. Uh, so, as I said, if you want to stand further back, you know, you're you know, ten meters, twenty meters back, uh, it's not going to be as critical to have everybody have everybody in a line like that uh, because it affects your your uh, depth of field. Um, you know, lastly, uh, what I want to talk about is the, uh, just really knowing, knowing the, the lens too. If you have enough experience with your lenses, you know where that sweet spot is, sweet. you know, as to, you know, not every single lens is going to behave the same way. You know, the different, different, uh, manufacturers use different, uh, different formulas, different, uh, you know, different, uh, construction of the lens and whatnot. So just because one method works for one uh, version of, let's say, a, a 1.2 um, aperture, doesn't mean they're all going to uh, uh, work the same way. So, um, so you really do need to know your lenses, and that comes through, through experience. Um, you know, like this lens on the camera I have here is a Carl Zeiss Planar 50mm uh, 1.4, and it's... Uh, you know, it's a uh, manual focus, um, manual focus lens, vintage lens, and uh, you know, it's great quality. I mean, this, this is a super sharp lens, but you still need to know what you're doing. You still need to understand how that depth of field works and how to use the tools that you have to get that get that uh, sharp focus. So again, portraiture, it's all about the eyes. Look into my eyes. Look. Focusing in on the eyes. And if it's too shallow a depth of field, you're going to find that the eye may be in focus, but the nose is not, the ears are not, nothing else in the photo is. You'll just get these eyes. So again, it's subjective as to how shallow you want that depth of field. Maybe, maybe the 0.95 or the 1 or 1 1.2 is too shallow. You know, maybe you want to go to 1.4 or 1.8 or two, you know, to, uh, to get a little bit more of the face in focus. And as I said, it's very subjective. It's up to you. Uh, but experiment, you know, trial, trial and error, see what works for you and what doesn't. But, um, uh, what was the last one I want to check is double checking. You should never assume, you know, that's the last thing I, I want to talk about. So if, um, you know, let's say I'm taking a, taking a photo of my, of my uh, uh, camera up here, the M50, which is which is uh, filming this right now. So if I want to zoom zoom in with my magnifier, make sure that the that the uh, lens is crystal clear and sharp. One, two, three. The thing I would suggest doing is now going to the, you know, going to your display on the back of the button, or the back the back of the button, the back of the camera. And uh, zooming in, um, zooming in on the picture to see if it really is as sharp as you as you uh, are expecting. And this is. I mean, I can see here. There's a pretty sharp, uh, pretty sharp picture here. So I would suggest you do the same thing when you're taking your photos. Is uh, um, you know, take the picture, take a look. You know, and obviously you can't do that for every picture, but just do some sample shots anyway, some test shots, take a look on the back, make sure you're as sharp as you, as you need to be, or as you want to be, and then move on from there. And, you know, once you've kind of nailed in or zeroed in on, uh, on what you're looking for, then that's, uh, you know, you really can't go, can't go wrong from there. So, um, so that's my, my advice for you. I'm going to give you some, uh, sample shots right now. Um, the first one is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my wife and, uh, and my son, Dylan. So my wife, Amy, and my son, Dylan. Yay! Yay! I'm going to have, I'm going to have Amy holding my son 
and I'm going to have them on the same, the same focal uh, plane. And you'll see how both of them should be in focus. Both of their eyes would be in focus. Then I'm going to have her, well, first, let me show you that. So I, both of this is both of them in focus right here. Okay. Now, next one, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have Amy kind of turn this way and, and put Dylan in front of her. And I'm going to focus in on one or the other. I'm going to focus in either on Dylan's eyes or on Amy's eyes, and you'll see the other person is going to be out of focus. So I'll show you that one right now. Aww. And the last one I'm going to show you is the opposite of that. I'm going to have Amy turn this way and have Dylan out of, out of that, that focal plane. So he's not going to be in focus. So the, the focus will be on, on Amy's eyes and you'll see that Dylan will fall out of focus in that regard. And that's, that's how really as simple it is when you're dealing with, with uh, shallow depth of field. It's just a matter of, of a, you know, of a few centimeters or for those in America, inches, you know, a few inches here or there, forward, backward, puts people out of, puts people out of focus. And even individually, you know, if you've focused in on somebody taking a, taking their picture and they smile and they're ready for their photo and then they adjust themselves a little bit and they might lean forward by an inch or two or a few centimeters or back either way. And now they're out of focus. So you always need to be checking that focus up to the last second before you take that, take that photo to make sure that uh, your results are going to be what you're expecting. All right. So that was uh, hopefully um, a short and sweet video for you this week. I know most of mine tend to go on for half an hour or so. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, this is something that I, you know, again, I can share with you and hopefully you've learned from and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go on from there and, and uh, get back next week into uh, some vintage lenses so I can introduce you some, to some more stuff. Because, you know, at Modesty Photography here, it's all about saving you money, simplifying processes, uh, sharing experiences, and, um, you know, Life is great from there. Uh, oh, just share a little, uh, little something about myself that just happened this week too. Is I, uh, you know, at my university, I won a, uh, a teaching award for outstanding contributions for uh, for 2020. So yay, good for me. Um, you know, get, win myself some uh, education money that I can use for research and whatnot. So anyway, a little kudos for me. Pat on the back. Good job, Dr. Scott. And uh, anyway, to wrap this all up, uh, as usual, I want to talk to you a little bit about if you're looking for some great software, uh, Luminar is an option that, uh, you know, you get Lightroom, you get, you know, Photoshop, you can capture one, you know, it's all kinds of uh, uh, software out there. But, uh, but Luminar is great because it's kind of, it's got some tweaks and elements to it that the, the others, don't ha either don't have or they don't do as well as as Luminar does so that's why I use it and it's also very economical as I said this is modesty photography and it's all about saving you money so if you click on the link down below you'll save yourself ten dollars from something that's already economical so hey why not and kick back a little something for me uh, for putting these videos together for you and um, you know it as I said, I, I can't talk highly enough about it. It's a great bit of software. They're coming out this year with an AI element. They already have an AI element in this version of, of Luminar, but they have an additional one that's uh, much more robust and uh, you know, can totally replace the skies and everything else. Um, but the, the software is rumored to pretty much be intuitive as to what it thinks would be best for your style of photography. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. And just change it for you with a click of a button. Instead of spending 30 minutes or an hour with all these sliders back and forth trying to tweak uh, it. Even though you can still do that, but um, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but my time is pretty limited and I like to uh, hurry up and get it done and off, off we go in that regard. So anyway, so that is that. Um, remember, 
This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and you belong here. That's right, don't forget that, you belong here. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these camera snobs or photo snobs who's gonna say anything negative about, uh, about anything that you do or anything you, you comment on me below. So anyway, uh, so do me a favor, support my channel, subscribe, please, subscribe. And lastly, subscribe and hit the like button. You know, that helps the algorithm too, helps you know, Facebook or Facebook, <laughs> helps YouTube recognize me, uh, you know, as a building channel and hopefully gets it out there for exposure and more people will be uh, uh, watching, watching these videos. So with that said, you have yourself a great day, have a great weekend, have a great week, and, uh, and I'll see you next uh, Saturday when I release these things. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Here I am, be a damn.